Hi everyone, I'm Taylor from Perfect Entry and today I'm going to show you the most simple trading strategy. This is a strategy which, if you're not making profit, I don't know what's wrong. So we can start by very quickly going over the spreadsheet that I've put together to go with it and then we're going to jump into the method. So the spreadsheet we've got to go with it will be made available. Very, very simple, you can put your starting account balance in and then after each trade is taken, you can just put the balance after the trade and you can put your date, direction, whether it was win, loss, break, even a link to the trading view screen, which I'll show you how to do in a moment, and then any notes you may have. And it will then calculate your percentage gain per trade and it will also tell you the rough lot size you should be looking at, assuming you're using a normal Forex pair. Um, in the spreadsheet there is also a method help sheet which you will find this method where I've broken down all of the settings for all of the indicators of which we're only using two. So you'll be able to get hold of this and again even if you're not using uh, this method uh, take a copy of this spreadsheet because you can use it as a trade journal as well. Uh, at the end of the day you're holding the date direction, you're putting a trading view link in, you're doing everything you need to be doing just as a good trade journal. Now we can jump into the method and I'm going to open TradingView now. So the method is very very simple, I'm looking at the screen here. We are, in fact I'll run through the indicators first. The indicators, I've got baseline overlay, the uh, only changes we need to worry about are in the two EMAs of the cloud, which I have set at 34 and 13. And then in the style tab, I've got the first six uh, ticked. And then we can come down and I have this plot right here, and that's the bottom, and that's all that should be on. Then in Pip Hunter SS, I have these four plots at the bottom. And in the inputs, I've changed them quite significantly actually, uh, to being these. Again, all settings are in the method help sheet. So if you're stuck, you can always consult the help sheet. Now, where do we begin with this method? This method is super, super, super simple. All you've got to do is look for when you are the... So the first thing you'll note is the squares on the top. I have made these all maximum brightness. So if I go back into baseline overlay, you'll see that I turned the opacity all the way to 100% on all of them. Uh, the reason being is we're not so worried about the chop filter that's built into them by default. We're just purely looking at the trend direction. So with that, we've got a base trend direction and this is like our master trend. The color of the cloud at the bottom doesn't matter so much. We care mostly about the um, bar on the top for the trend direction. What we're looking for is a situation where we, if, and I'm going to start off with a buy, um, we are looking for when SS candles makes our candle colour go white. In this case, we've got one right here. At the same time, or uh, just after the, um, can, the bars at the top being green. So if the bars at the top are green and your candle goes white, Providing you are above the cloud, then we can look at taking a buy entry. So in this case, we would be looking at the following. Now, normally with this, I very much pick my pairs carefully and I will give a list in the spreadsheet of pairs that I often look at with this method. But our entire aim is just to collect 10 pips. Now, with some pairs due to the volatility, I do end up running a slightly wonky risk to reward ratio, but I'll explain how I get away with it. Now in most cases, now in some cases, like this one here, you would run a 1 to 1 to 1, 1 to 1 1.1 risk to reward ratio, so very, very, very tight. However, what I end up doing is I split my trade in two. One piece will have the 1 to 1 take profit, and I think for a smaller account, I would very much consider that my whole trade will just be that small piece that comes off at one to one. And then the other one is just, I leave it open and trail stop it. And with, uh, if you're someone who trades on desktop, there is 
in the MetaTrader 4 and 5 app, you can right click and set a trail stop of a given number of points, and that would be the way to do it, where you can set it as 10 pips, or you can do it as a different increment if you wish. If you wanted to be slightly more aggressive, you might set it as a 5 pip trail stop, so on and so forth. So that's how you would set one half and the other half. Now, what we're mainly focusing on is just simply grabbing 10 pips. You'll find that on the hourly and on some pairs, Ordcad wouldn't be one of them, but on some pairs on like the 15 minute, you'll be able to get 10 pips very, very easily. I would say that for something like uh, NAS or US30, I probably wouldn't look at trading a method like this because your stops and your take profits are going to end up being a lot bigger and the because your stops are going to be bigger you're going to need a larger account balance to do it it's doable but you are going to need a larger base account balance i prefer trading normal uh, forex pairs at the end of the day the amount you can win and lose is the same because you're always basing it as a ratio of the percentage balance of your account so if we now look at a few sell options, there's a good few of them here. We have uh, this position right here. There was even one, two candles later, if you happen to miss it. Oh, actually no, we can't take those, it's still green. I tell a lie. We would have taken this one, which yeah, okay, would have been a loss. We wouldn't have taken this, we could have taken this one, which we would have tried, been able to trail out and had a massive potential reward. So if I just show that off, uh, and I put this down to like, oh, I'm just going to leave it at sort of 10, 15 pips. You can see that because we take our signal at the end of the candle close, we wouldn't have even had 10 pips of drawdown. The max drawdown we would have had was five in this case. So I'm just going to leave that here. And you can see that we could have very, very easily had our 10 pips. And if we trail stopped, we could have potentially had maybe 50 or maybe even up down to there's 114 if you happened to be very, very accurate and get it right near the bottom. Uh, other trades we can look at, we wouldn't take this buy because this isn't green. This sell we would take and we probably would have just had our 10 pips because chances are we would have got it off this candle over here, which would have been 15, so that would have been fine. This one would have also been more than ample. And the same with this one here, it would have given us our 10 pips. And even this one here, you have the wick down, which would be more than 10 pips. See, there's a few examples. What I must say is that we must be very, very careful on making sure that your confluences are there. Make sure your bars are red if you're taking sales. Make sure they're green if you're taking buys. Make sure you're the right side of the cloud every time. Always make sure you're trail stopping. And if you're not trail stopping, then do your one-to-one -one and do no more. Um, unless you're someone who's going to be able to sit there and watch it. If you're sitting there and watching it, Please, please, please make sure that you're not playing your own psychological game by just saying, oh, I'll let it run a little bit more, I'll let it run a little bit more, even if it starts coming back at you. You must close if you see it coming back at you. This is really a method that's very much scalping, but due to the fact that this is on currently the one hour chart, it can turn into swing trades. However, you must be very, very aggressive in your profit taking because the point of this method is that we keep our win rate high. Now, because we're keeping our win rate excessively high, this is where we can get into the realms of running almost negative uh, win, like risk reward ratios where our risk is slightly more than our reward just simply because we're able to keep that so high. And that's where in some instances on some pairs, if I know that they particularly wick I might even run my stop loss slightly wider than my take profit just to take into account some of those wicks now I'm not saying that you should do it however there is an option there uh, as much as you've also got the option that I'll explain now of in some pairs you might consider running your stop loss instead of being a hard pip goal so looking for 10 pips risking 10 pips you might just count like two to three candles back and run the high or the low of those two or three candles as your stop loss and then either run one to one again or just still aim for those 10 pips just so that you can secure as quickly as possible. Now, 
obviously markets are shut at the moment, but I will be posting some trades which I will take live next week to demonstrate the efficiency of this method. If anyone has any questions on the method, then of course you're always welcome to leave a message in the Discord. I will focus on trying to help as many people as possible with it, and really I'm trying to uh, do a week where we kind of drive towards this method just so that it can be adapted, but also so that it can help fix gaps with a lot of people. A lot of people I've seen are not very heavily focused on the education and are still suffering a little bit. So hopefully this quick and dirty method will be enough to get people going. Uh, with all that said, uh, enjoy your week trading and I will see you in the next video.